It's been far too long. And we're back with a man, a myth, a legend. It's Frank Turner and very a foghorn. Very much a myth. That was the foghorn that goes off every time anyone says my name. Um, uh, yes, I must admit, sitting at backstage at a festival talking to you makes me feel like the pandemic never happened. I was, I was kind of feeling this. It's like, you were actually the last interview that was cancelled on me before lockdown. I mean, I'd apologise, but I had my reasons. <laughs> yeah. So this is like full circle. Yeah. You cancelled me, then the very first interview back is with you. It's like, it's like it never happened. And your chops are so choppy <laughs> yeah your interview chops no i mean i mean you know you'd never know you had 18 months off <laughs> i mean yeah. that was a compliment oh i'll take that thank uh, you also obviously last time we spoke was via the medium of zoom um oh yeah because we did a bunch of awards and mm. because of the outstanding work you did for uh the joiners uh all the other yes. independent music venues around the world around the, yeah uh, we we do have it all right our, our our budget is not very big <laughs> But I've we, got more but, stuff but from do, you guys. We do have an award This for you. is incredible. Thank you. Uh, it's the outstanding contribution to the music. Uh, I honestly, I will try. You know where that's going to go? Next to the badge. Next to the badge, <laughs> which I still have. That's like my crowning moment. No, but I mean that badge, I actually use it. <laughs> like as in, because I, the, the, for those who don't know, the, the question I often get asked is, well, you know, how do you know when you made it? And I, you asked me that once and I said, well, you don't like get given a badge saying you've made it. Then he made me said badge, so now I do know that I've made it. It's been... And um, people still ask that question, and I produce the badge, <laughs> or at least mention it. Yeah. It's because you said in an interview, literally the day before I interviewed you, that you didn't know you'd made it until someone gave you a badge. So I was like, that night, I went, I'm going to Sainsbury's, and I'm <laughs> making yeah, well, the badge. It's, it's, it's on my shelf at home. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But that's, that is, Thank uh, you, and this will go next to it. I'm very, very touched. Thank you very much. Because you, yeah. well, it was amazing what you did for the, the joiners, the railway, and all the other Thank you. Venues. Yeah, I mean, it's it felt to me like the least i could do just in the sense that my take on the whole thing was it was a debt repaid i wouldn't have a career without those places and indeed most of the people playing this festival wouldn't have a career yeah. without those places um and you know uh, i think that um i i was quite screwed by the pandemic organizationally financially all the rest of it but it wasn't like i got evicted i wasn't starved to death and and there were people who were hurt hard, harder hit harder as well, yeah. I say. And, and uh you know you do what you can to help so um and also it was self-interested to the extent that it gave me something to do <laughs> um and it, it's funny a lot of people keep saying to me you know it really kept me sane during lockdown and i'm like yeah you and me both i mean yeah. i knew what day of the week it was <laughs> judging by partly when when it was coming out but more 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 spiritually by how my hangover was doing <laughs> because i used to i tended to go large yeah. after those nights because there was literally nothing else to do yeah so but i, I was gonna get onto live streams because you um mm. previewed a couple of new songs and there's a song in there which i wish we had more time to discuss and at some point hopefully you'll be doing a tour and yeah. we can sit down a bit longer but the song for scott yes is yeah is it, i i couldn't watch it the first time i had to tell because I was, I was just in floods it was amazing it's thank a you beautiful um, song. yeah it's uh it is on the next record um which the mixes of which we're going to be finished <laughs> next week maybe i don't know we'll we'll see um but uh yeah i mean actually today's a slightly pointed day because the last time i ever saw scott was at victoria's festival uh in 2017 uh, yeah they played been. on the castle stage yeah it might i think it was just scott playing solo from memory actually okay last time because i don't think the rest of the band were here anyway regardless we had a lovely afternoon yeah. hanging out and there was a shadow of all not being 100 percent well that day but we had a lovely chat afterwards we spoke many times after that but that was the last time i saw him in person um and you know it, with all these things one tries to remember the good uh and i had a nice day that day with yeah. my friend nevertheless it's a little bit weird being here today but hey now i'm hanging yeah. out with you but that yeah that that song is Thank and you. i cannot cannot wait to hear the the full band version yeah cause... it's i mean this is an exclusive do you want an exclusive yes i'll, I'll take an exclusive um so <laughs> without now going into the weeds on this i mean we have a, a number of different drummers playing on the new record i parted ways yeah. with a sleeping soul with nige um which is a sadness and is not a thing i can discuss further but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is what it is for the majority of the record we have elam rubin on drums which is incredible he's a drum from nine inch nails and he's really rather good he's got <laughs> yeah. a future in this gig <laughs> Who um, are nine inch nails i've uh, not heard of them <laughs> yeah they're gonna go far yeah. check them out um uh, and then uh there's also so yeah dom howard from muse played drums on the gathering yeah i know that's that's which that's is pretty cool um but also on this song on wave across bay 
the song about it's called A Wave Across the yeah. Bay there we go uh, the drumming was done by Jason from Death Cab for Cutie who is an old friend of Scott's that's um, really cool and we asked if he'd be interested and he was um, uh, he was enthusiastic about being part of it so there's, there's, there was a touch of that involved as well I did ask Grant and the rest of the guys in Rabbit if they wanted to be on the song and, and they politely declined oh, that's fair enough but yeah no I'm looking forward to that. Um, we haven't actually got much time left already, but I actually found you and the... me, baby. <laughs> Talk for days. We, I, 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 I generally could sit here for hours with you, and, yeah. and I would not get bored. Um, I found <laughs> I found the very first notes... Sounds like we, a challenge. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry, continue. I found the very first notes from when uh, we very first spoke, and uh, it literally... I could repeat most of these today, except for... Um, so, touring the world, yeah. sort of, getting, slowly to get well, back. Yeah, slowly. Um, well... Played the O2 the other night, um, <laughs> written a book, released a new album, but it's on the way, and uh, made way. a film. Yeah. That was when the Bloody Get hell. Better film came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blimey, blimey. And what a strange time that was. For some reason, it says here, Wales yesterday. I, I'm assuming that means you played in Wales or Cardiff, uh, Cardiff the day before. Cardiff Arena, <laughs> which my, uh, this is a, this is the most um, high volume thing I'm going to say all day. It's my favourite arena, Cardiff Arena. It's just a great, <laughs> motor point arena. It's just a great room. <laughs> that, yeah, so that would have been... Uh, that was the I, in which case that interview was on the last day of the 2014 tour yes um, at the Portsmouth Guildhall which is not far away from where we are sat because it was a uh, day before Valentine's Day and I made you a tape deck heart <laughs> Valentine's Day card <laughs> that was good lord that was seven years ago it was crikey <laughs> there's the date oh wow amazing um, yeah I mean uh, so I haven't written another book loads of people are like oh lockdown give me another book and I said no no <laughs> um, well it's just hard writing books and also I've written two and I've, they're both about me which requires the following research <laughs> right the, the, you don't need to do any research if you're writing a book about what I can remember from you know about what I can remember about me from an unspecified period of time is a book topic that requires no research and I've done it twice um, and I have an ambition to write a proper book one day but I'm aware that it would require, like, you know, going to a library probably. Yeah, uh, there's know, effort. Reading some other books. They were closed anyway. Well, exactly. Yeah, see? Yeah. They were closed. So, um, I did learn how to be a producer and built a studio. Yeah, I know, showing but, off. Some people just grew a beard. Um, and a very fine beard it is too, you put in mind, shame. Um, <laughs> That's the only thing of yours I can put to shame. This, this incidentally, <laughs> is, this has got nothing to do with anything, but I have to share this. My friend Helen and I have known each other since 1997. Right, and she's a dear friend of mine. She lives in France these days. She came over the other day with her daughters, and she came round my house to say hello and hang out. And uh, 1997, right? Yeah. Hold, that's an important date in this story. Okay. I first grew a beard in 2001 or two, probably 2002. She arrived and she went, "You've grown a beard," <laughs> and I was like, "I've had one for 19 years," <laughs> and she's like. Have you? I mean, it's not much of a beard, is it? It's oh! <laughs> well, I mean, presumably she doesn't think so. <laughs> but I couldn't believe it. I was like, have you not looked at my face in the last 19 years? No. Nope. And the answer appears to be no. Anyway, I have a beard. <laughs> there we go. Just not an impressive one. Um, right, just some quick fire questions mm. from uh, some fans. Bradley wants to know, what was the first ever band t-shirt slash merch you brought? Can I have a guess first? Yes. Was it Maiden? Yes. Boom. It was Fear of the Dark. And there was a photo of me, and the first time I ever got pissed, I slept it off on my grandma's sofa, and I'm wearing a Fear of the Dark t-shirt. It's pretty cool. Amazing. Um, Chris wants to know, well, this is actually quite a long question, uh, answer, but he thinks your music resonates with six to eight-year-olds. Why do you think that is? Because you always have such a diverse crowd. I have no idea, and I'm not a parent, and I've learned the hard way through my unclehood not to be one of those idiots <laughs> who holds forth about parenting without ever having done it. So I, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, maybe he could do some research and <laughs> let me know. What's the weirdest, Ben wants to know, what's the weirdest question you've ever been asked in an interview? This one. Good. And <laughs> a couple of questions which um, I don't think you can answer, but I think you'll be hopeful for. Are the US dates going ahead? As far as I know, I mean, there were two, there are two issues. There's the visa side of things, which is more much more weird and complicated than it ever was, and that side of things we have now taken care of. Obviously, and this is an important thing to say, like in everything in the last 18 months, I've obviously been very keen to do my job again. Yeah. And not just that, to do it in a way that isn't like dramatic. I don't want every gig I do to be like, oh my God, it's the first blah, 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 since blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I want to just be a gig. Do you know what I mean? I want to do my go do my job. This so, to be double. Yeah, exactly. And and um, I also want, you know, I, I 
I, I want to, I've tried to be on the forefront of all of that, of trying to help, trying to do pilots, blah, 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 blah. But of course, at every step of that, you don't ever want to be part of the problem. You don't want to make things worse. I don't want other people to get sick coming to shows. I don't want to get sick myself. I don't yeah. want my crew to get sick, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Apparently, this stuff does bear restating. So the deal with the states right now is just that, as far as we know, it's going ahead. We're obviously what, watching the news like hawks. It is quite depressing because it feels quite a lot like March last year all over again, yeah. which is no fun. But um, the point is, I think we're going to do it, but if it becomes apparent that it's the wrong thing to do, then we won't do it. Yeah. Um, but fingers crossed. And thank fingers you for crossed. Asking. Right. We. Uh, that's it. That's all the time we've got. Thank you so much. As always, love talking to you. Like a I said, pleasure. talked to you for ages. I've missed you. I have missed have you. Have you so been much. all right? I have. Yeah. Just about. Okay. We're, we're it's been. There. I'm not. Am I allowed to swear? I'm going to swear on this. Yeah. It's been fucked. <laughs> yes, it has. Isn't it? It's been really fucked. Well, we'll see you. See you again. Uh, lost evening. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks. <laughs>